hello. I'm so excited to be here, and um, it's just great. And um, the best bit about my session is that I am all that's between you and lunch. So you have to be nice to me, otherwise I'll just bore you with 6,000 PowerPoints. It'll be grim. So the important thing also is that this session is going to be co-created by all of us. I'm sure you heard from other talks and from things you've read about how in this new economy we've got to communicate. And Did you, did you read those? You read them? Uh, so co-create, you have to nod or shake your head, otherwise we can't do it. Yeah, it's like that, okay? Yes, did you read it? Great, okay, so important, please, two seconds, say hello to the person here, the person there, and most important, the ones behind you. Because later you might be talking to them, and it's important you know if they're okay behind you. So quickly, just two seconds, high speed, go. Hi, nice Hi to meet good you. to meet you. <laughs> Great. So, are they okay, the guys behind you? Yes? Okay, great, we go. Okay, so I, um, I'm very happy to be here to spend time with you. Um, my background, as you know, is I'm an executive educator, so I educate executives and also help them with execution, making things happen, innovation. Um, I'm probably well known for what's known as my world after midnight model, which is a simplification of some of the complexity we have. And my plan today had been to come and join, like all the other speakers, talking about the future, showing you some nice pictures, or, I don't know, mice with implants and stuff like that. I was so excited to do that. And then these wicked people, look at the title they gave me, How to Accelerate Digital Transformation. You know, I don't understand. Why is it necessary to talk about this? Are you guys, are you doing digital transformation? You can put your hand up if you are. So, yeah, you look, look around you, you see? And I bet you've been doing it for more than six months. Is that right? Yes? So why have you not finished? Okay, guys, there's something strange going on. We invest in trying to shift and transform our organizations, and somehow it's really slow. So I get the job of concentrating on how to do it. But as I said, I would love to talk about more technology, because part of what I do is I try to live in the future. I try and live as digital a life as I can, really so I can explain things and experience them, not read them as an academic from a book. So I'm going to ask you to forgive me because there are three different things I want to do. One is I want to play a little bit with technology. Okay, so I've come here wearing a wearable. Okay, and you have to notice when I use it. Yes, everyone knows wearable. Okay, I wanted an implantable, but unfortunately it's very big and there was no clever place to put it. Okay, also I want to make my presentation from the cloud. You heard about the cloud. My presentation is all on the cloud. It's not here. It's not on the, it's not, are you afraid? <laughs> it's funny, you know, I had, uh, I had a funny situation. One of the world's biggest cloud services providers, and I was making a presentation like this, and before I was talking to the executives, and the person in charge of global cloud services, I said to him, I said, my presentation is on the cloud. He said, is that wise? <laughs> He's selling this to everybody. So that's number two. And the third is I want to uh, bring a couple of my colleagues in as we're talking to try and give you some inputs on how my life is. So I'll do that first for a very small piece, just so you understand how I transform my, my own life as a gray-haired uh, person uh, together. So to start off with, this is a PowerPoint. Am I correct? It looks like a PowerPoint or maybe Prezi or something like that. So, how would you feel if I said, actually, that's not a PowerPoint, it's an A3 sized poster? You think I'm crazy, don't you? It's funnier than that. It's an A3 sized poster on a big whiteboard. No? It's an A3 sized poster on a big whiteboard in a big teaching room. You don't believe me? With other people there who are listening to this presentation because I've invited some of my colleagues and some of my clients to come and join us and talk about life as you transform digitally. You think I'm completely crazy. You think this guy has gone crazy. So let's just see whether it's true or not. So um, this is the bit where I get to use my, my wearable, you see, so I'm quite excited about this. Hey, it's so cool. 
Okay. Wow. Woo. Ah. There you go. I'll learn how to drive one day. Okay. So this is me. And here are some of my colleagues. I invited one of my clients in to come and join us. So Tammy, hello. This is Dr. Watchon from the health service in the UK. Just two seconds hello. to explain what it's like living a digital life. Tammy, over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, so hello. I work hello. in this uh, fully VR immersive environment. Uh, because of that, I no longer have to drive every day. So I've got a 90 minutes to myself every day to do what I want. I have about 80% less email. Imagine how much time that saves me in a working day. And I'm working on twice as many projects as I used to work on. I don't have twice as much work, but twice as many projects because we work in a really collaborative way, delivering things at speed so we can deliver outcomes to patients uh, because I work in their health service in Scotland. Thank and you. that makes uh, life really much more fun, much more productive, uh, and I really enjoy working in this immersive space. Thank you very much, Tammy. Everyone applause. Okay, thank you. That's great. Brilliant. Okay. And in the, in the background is my colleague from Brazil and so on. But this is where I'm going to be working. So what I want to do is I want to um, explain to you the basis of what I'm going to talk about in terms of how to make digitization and digitalization and transformation go faster is the main story. But I have a secret story. My vision is to create all of you into centaurs, into extra powerful human beings. Because some of the challenges we know about things like job replacement and stuff are huge. And I have a completely different vision on how we solve it. So part of my reason for inviting my colleague and my client here is to explain to you that you don't just have to use technology in one direction. We can be very creative. So, just from you, since we are co-creating, I have one question before I start. Are there any special requests? I want you to imagine that the next 40 or so minutes is absolutely fine. Oh, by the way, the trick with this type of VR is the details. The sound is three-dimensional, so people forget they're in a room. But also, if you do it, you see, you believed she was a real person. I don't know, Tammy, if you could jump or somebody could jump. Because your brain sees the smile and it hacks your brain. So you don't realize it's not real. Are you with me? And um, what happened there? I know what happened. I got too enthusiastic. That's what happens to me all the time. <laughs> and, and then there's little detail like the glass. Can you see here? There's a little bit of skirting board. It fools your brain into thinking it's a real thing. The clock up here, the tick, second tick, is not real, but it looks real. OK, so 40 minutes. I want you to imagine the next session is fantastic. I don't know what you want to learn. You want to learn, don't wait just for the questions. You want to learn about how to accelerate your digital transformation, overcoming resistance of people, how to think so you can make the messages about transformation. Very simple. You can explain it right the way to the person at the cleaning, uh, cleaning your office so they also become excited. I don't know. What is your biggest hope to get from my session? Second, what don't you want me to waste time on? Your biggest fear. Please, in the little groups you were talking just now, I'll take the first two requests and I build them into my presentation. We co-create. You have 30 seconds. Talk, talk, talk. Capture, go. Talk, go, 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 go. How's the translator doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> About 10 seconds left, okay. Okay, so just shout out the two, one or two. Let's start with the fears, things you don't want me to waste time on. Anything you don't want me to waste time on? Not practical, not applicable, not practical, applicable, pract applicable. Anything else? Sorry? Talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? Okay. <laughs> okay. Talking. Okay. Great. Anything you would really like me to cover and explain? Just shout loud. Fear of change and management. How to overcome management mindset. But management, they have a very positive attitude. You know how every time you have an idea and you go directly to your manager and you just say, hey, manager, I have this idea. They say, tell me, tell me. Please sit down. The moment you tell them the idea, they say, we stop everything. We take all the budget resources. We put it on your idea now. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, we picked that one. Okay, great. So, so let me just start you, start you off on the journey. I want to start by starting to explain that a lot of the reasons we get digital transformation wrong 
is because there is so much noise out there. As you heard earlier, there are no experts, but there are lots of blogs and articles. Now, the other day I went to a presentation and before me was an extra futurist. And this futurist was talking about the future and how life could be. And he explained really in great detail how, oh, what would happen in the future is you will be woken up early in the morning, extra five minutes, because the, the neural net has de detected traffic. So it wakes you up extra, okay? And then while you're getting dressed, your house knows that it should make it warmer. Your kitchen has ordered some extra, you know, eggs for you. I don't know what it is. And then you set up for work. And as you're going to work, the train which is coming, they put extra trains on there because they know more people are coming. And when you sit in the train, there's comprehensive Wi-Fi. And you move through this train. And the train, as the train is getting to the office, the office knows you're coming. So it raises the heating or lowers the heating. Amazing. He was showing all these things. I was going, wow. And, he said, and then he finished by saying, and when you arrive at the office, then you go to your meeting. <laughs> is it just me or is that crazy? <laughs> you have all this technology and still you do the meeting. Amazing. So this was my first. I just, I was sitting there thinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me explain the challenge. The problem is this. You see, whenever people predict the future, they make the same mistake. They make the same mistake. Uh, the way I would describe it is you've seen like Hollywood posters. Have you seen things like Hollywood posters, for example? Okay, and uh, let me just pull this up. And sometimes you'll get a Hollywood poster for a film. Okay, so here's the film. And the film is called The Future. I'll make it a big F, Future. You got that? Future, okay. Okay, I got it. Okay, Future, okay. That's the film. And they said, The Future. And then it'll say something like, an exciting roller coaster of opportunity and delivery. And then they'll say, starring. Okay? And then the star of the movie called The Future is what? It's called technology. And there's a little bit here, like a little walk on part for the human beings. And that's why the future predictions are always rubbish, because they forget we're inside. Do you understand? And we are the heroes, we are the people who should be the star. And that's what's happening a lot. And then the noise makes you go towards, oh, yes. But the thing which amazed me most about that particular vision was the thought that I would be woken up in the morning by my computer. I much prefer my wife to wake me up. <laughs> is it just me? You understand how crazy the vision is? It's totally dehumanized. When we start to look at how we move forward with change and start to drive transformation, we realize that we're making many different mistakes. And I want to build this from the ground up. I'll give you some really solid takeaways so that you really understand what's going on. The way I would start is by just clarifying the game. The game is very simple. Has everyone here at least 20 years old? 20 years old, okay, great. And everyone here is sort of working or you've worked before? Great, okay, superb. In that case, I show you my favorite diagram. This is my off the scale favorite diagram of all time, okay? And, <laughs> and it works a little bit like this. Basically, it starts over here where it says I have a, oops, I have a high workload, okay? So it starts over here where it says I have a high workload, you got it, okay? And it says I have a high workload, so I don't have time to plan to do or to be creative. So I don't realize how much I'm committed to and I've only done half. So when the boss, the management guy comes and asks me to do something else, I say yes more than is realistic, pushing my workload up, giving me less time to plan or to do things. So sometimes I come close to deadlines other people think are important. And because they're worried they'll miss their deadlines, guess what? They come and they, sorry, they spend some time interrupting me. So I spend a lot of my time restarting half done work, which of course then, pushes up my workload even more, giving me less time to plan or to do. So now I'm disorganized and people know they can send me messages even at night and get away with it. Have you seen this happening to your colleagues at work? Just your colleagues, not you. <laughs> How could I know your life before I met you? Do you understand? We're all in the same mess. That means the mess is bigger than each of us and all of us put together. Let me explain to you, and when I finished explaining these next three curves, everything in life and the future, crystal clear. Nothing to worry about. Give me only maybe six minutes. Are you cool? 
If you don't like anything I'm saying, shout it out immediately so we get it right. Okay, so together, let's go and have a look. I want you to think, you guys who are more than 20 years old, okay? And I'm going to put here on the bottom, oh, I'll do it in white. White is much better. Let me do it in white, okay? So like white, thick line, there we go. Oh, that's not very white, is it? Try again, you never know. Hey, technology, it worked. Now, <laughs> past, okay? And between these two, I put uh, effectively 20 years, okay? You got it? On this axis here, I want us to put change. So the pace of change. And I want you to tell me, pace of change now, 20 years ago, higher, lower? Oh, come on, that was the easy question. Higher, lower? Higher. Thank you, okay, higher. How are those two points joined together? Exponentially, why? Because more people are accepting change, you've got more, so, okay, great, not a worry. So that's the first thing. When we look at change, it's doing that. But more importantly, how are we learning and changing to match? Do you remember when you could do budgets and you knew what was going to come next and you could make a plan? And do you remember annual budget? You wait for the earth to go all the way around the sun, then you make a budget, then it goes around. Do you remember that stuff? Okay, great. So once upon a time, you could learn faster than the world was changing. That's why you could forecast. How has that one gone? Let's do it together. I move the pen horizontally. Shut up a bit, down a bit the same. We get a third view. Action, go. Down. <laughs> Today. <laughs> okay, great. It's quite flat. You can't move because you said the management. They have a strategy. This is our five-year strategy. It's to do with, and it's got nothing to do with digitization, but they set it. And so for the next five years, you're going, hey, guys, we need some new offers. We need to recruit some young people. They go, no, no, it's not our strategy. You understand? That's why it's flat. You got it? How crazy, okay? So that's change. Change is not the interesting one. The other one also is complexity. Complexity also does something quite interesting. So let's think about it. Now, past, complexity. Is it the same curve? No, it's slowing down, complexity. <laughs> but rather than having learning on that one, on complexity there's a different one, which is our ability to understand what we're looking at. So if you see things like black swans, they happen because the complexity has outstripped your ability to understand. You got it? So what it means is, if you are closer to this side, it's possible that almost everything you are doing strategically and logically is absolute rubbish because you've misunderstood what you're looking at. Don't worry, I'll explain to you how to avoid that, okay? Third one, okay, is connection. We know that, hyper-connection. Now, my favorite diagram of connection, if I can find it quickly, is this one. This one always makes me laugh. No, not that one. This one I'll tell you a joke about there another time. Ultra-connectivity, this is my favorite. This is the web-enabled donkey. Okay, I, I just brought it, just, it's just great, isn't it? Um, but, but the really, really crucial element here is those graphs I'm showing you are very, very critical for making things happen. You see, if you can learn fast and the world is changing and you're clever, you make a hierarchy so the boss can tell what people to, should do. You got that? If you can understand faster than the complexity, you can make longer term strategies. You got that? And execution is make strategy, agree, execute. You got it? Okay. And if you have hyper connection, then you can send the messages down until you get to the point where there's more connections than you can absorb. The typical organization with 15 senior people making all the key decisions, you can give them information at 10 megabits per second. Who here has as their fast broadband 10 megabits per second? Do you understand what I'm saying? You can never get the information to your senior people at a rate at which they can make the right decisions in order to drive the organization. That model is broken. Do you understand? Great, okay. So why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this quite simply because if you get this model here, you realize it's cool. Because what happens is we set off to transform. We want to transform. But our minds are coming from a world where we think we know what we're doing. So classically, we make some mistakes. I'm going to tell you the classic mistakes organizations make. And for each one, I'll tell you the solution. So when it gets your turn, go, that's me. Okay, then I tell you the solution. If I arrive at the end of my presentation and you haven't seen yourself, then it probably means that you're even further off the charts, okay? <laughs> so let's go for it. So I want to share with you quickly this, this very simple model, which I hope will help you understand what's going on. So over here are, come on broadband, come on broadband. This is the cloud. By the way, oh, there you go, okay, great. So over here are the three different models I just described to you, easy. 
But I want to start with organizations whose mindset, come on, whose mindset, I'm not panicking, hey, whose mindset is here? Okay, efficiency mindset. On that diagram, we've put like innovation and things. But if your organization is serious about efficiency, you don't really do innovation. You just put it in the annual report. You got me? Okay, great. So this is how many organizations are. And when you're in an organization like that and you walk down the corridor, the type of conversation which you hear is this sort, this sort of thing. You hear people saying things like, um, oh, come back. You hear people saying things like, uh, let's have a meeting to discuss and uh, 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 we must set our KPIs and stuff like that. And the reason they do that is because these people in this organization, they're really stuck in the 20th century. Um, really seriously. Um, sometimes I describe them as time travelers. You know, they wake up in the morning in a 21st century house where they have internet connectivity, they can talk to their friends on the other side of the world, their kids are in their bedrooms playing computer games virtually with everyone else. They get dressed, they get on a train, like I was saying, they travel to an office, but this office is not in the 21st century, it's in the 20th century. Everything's locked down, like those big computers you just saw. You can't do anything. So you imagine they've traveled here to come and do some creative stuff. But no, they keep going, let's have a meeting. I'll send you an email. They, these words come out of their mouths all day. And so I say, I email you, you reply to her, <coughs> blind CC him, he sees her, bumps into there with some gossip. After about 60 emails, we realize nobody has the big picture. So we have to have a meeting, but we've traveled to different offices, so we cannot meet. So they say, okay, we'll have a conference call. Have you heard of this thing? Very amazing 20th century invention. Basically, it's like this. Everybody phones in, beep, who's there, Fred, beep, etc. <laughs> then my definition of a conference call is one person talking, 20 people continue to do their emails. Nobody's listening. You're not going to execute anything. <coughs> so that's this type of organization. You got it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, the thing about organizations like this is they see the technological opportunities. They see the opportunity to do all these things which I'm sure you've read about. They see the opportunities to think about AI. They don't. Oh, this, by the way, is one of my favorite pictures. This is AI creating dinosaurs from flowers. It's great. They see the opportunity for augmented reality. And all they're thinking is efficiency, efficiency. Are you with me? So this, for example, is I'll be efficient. This is for people who go to the supermarket and they find supermarket shopping too difficult. That's the type of mindset which people have when they see these technologies. Are you with me? So they have all these technologies, but they're always thinking, will this make us faster? Will this make us more efficient? Can it remove people? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so that's all they ever think now. I call organizations like that, I call them old world optimized. They have completely the wrong model. They are assuming that the game is to get rid of people. And one of the funniest things I ever saw was a CEO of one of these companies saying, our organization is dedicated to machine learning as a way of reducing our costs. We're going to automate our key processes and reduce the work workforce whilst looking for talented people to join us. <laughs> Hello. Stupid would you have to be to work for that company? Are you with me? So they don't get it. The mistake they make is they focus on trying to reduce the costs. The secret is if you want to survive, like my client from the NHS was explaining, the way you make technology work is to enhance people, not to replace them. What do I mean by that? I'll come to that in a second. <laughs> okay? Because if you replace them, the game is over. You want your people to be, to be super centaurs more than anything else. To have a better life. That's how you grow the business. Okay. So the next category which you'll find yourselves in if you're not careful. Did anyone recognize themselves in that one? Oh, some people. Okay, great. Next category, my favorite. This one, this one, by the way, if you're a consultant, there's so much money to be made here. Okay, this one, you know how if you have an outfit and you have to go somewhere and it's quite an old outfit, you get some accessories to wear so you look cool. I, I, you know that, okay? These companies, they just go around buying stuff. They go, everyone must have an iPad. They give everyone an iPad. You know, we must make sure we utilize, I don't know, a drones. And they go, are you with me? They just basically, they just buy stuff. They add it to their company. But the company models of business don't change. The behaviors are still the old world meeting. And nobody personally changes their behavior. You with me? And I would say there are a lot of companies in that one. Generally, your cost base starts to rise because your digital transformation brings no value. So as the cost base rises, you slow down because you don't want to spend the money. If you want to accelerate your digital transformation, you have to change how you think about it. And I'm going to take you to the next level. 
I hope you recognize yourself there. So step one, if you are on level one, don't worry, okay? But concentrate on getting enough cash to be able to jump. If you are at this level, don't worry, but everything you have bought so far is probably obsolete. You need to rethink how you're going to build your business model before you come back and look at the technology. Human need, then technology. If you're at this level, these people are even funnier. These ones, they get it. They know something is coming. So they go, we must transform. We must change our business. There are opportunities around the world, okay? And they start to discuss it. So what I have here on the left is what we call a horse-drawn carriage. Did you see such things? Amazing. Then somebody came with an idea, horse-less carriage. In other words, no horse. But stop and think about it. The person here, they've invested in the horse, the person who's riding it, the carriage. So when they move to the horse-less carriage, they're really upset because they have to leave so many things behind. And it's also with people. I bet you all love your jobs, am I right? And I bet you love your jobs because you've created jobs where you do everything you like to do, not necessarily what the customer needs. Am I right? <laughs> it's the same with businesses. You're not supposed to laugh. If your boss is here, go, <laughs> okay? It's the same with businesses. So these organizations, they do something very funny. They go, we're going to transform. And then they realize that this means losing their resources. So basically what they do is they kill the horse and they stick the horse on the front. And you will see this, the funniest one I saw. And again, I just find this stuff so amazing when I read these blogs. The funniest one I saw was this one here, which is this drones one. Now, I have to confess, I have skin in the game because one of my clients was British Aerospace, and I managed to convince the board to move their strategy from uh, uh, aircraft with pilots in it away to uh, aircraft without. And the way I did it was my researcher drew a graph of time you invent the plane to time when it flies. So Wright Brothers, invent the plane, fly tomorrow then invent the plane, fly it next month. You with me? And it was getting longer, but exponentially. You know, I presented this to the board, and I said, my final line, which was the persuasive line, was I said, so all of you are here will be dead before any of the projects you're working on will fly. <laughs> it's great. So they changed, and they built the Raptor and stuff. So I have some bit of skin in the game. But this is my favorite at the moment, this one here, the pizza delivery by. Now, I was a teenager, I don't know about you guys, but if a free pizza was flying, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. And then the other one I like also is this one. I live in, I live in, I'm going to London, I live in near London, and can you imagine with all the hassle and scared with things we have in the world with security, can you imagine if this big thing where nobody knows what's inside it was rolling down the road through population center? It's going to happen. It's just nonsense. But they fool you into this stuff. So you think you're changing. You're not changing. You're standing still. So I stop at that point because you have to consider that everything I'm going to do between here and the end is about how to accelerate. First thing in accelerating is get your brain straight. Remember those three curves. Recognize that whatever you're thinking is probably not right. Rethink it. Talk to other people. Connect with other people. When you are then reading other people's stuff, put the human being back inside it and say, will this really fly? And check, because people are trying to sell you stuff. So they'll sell you anything. But start from your organization. Where do we go? Where are we? What do our customers want? In particular, at this level, you look for what we call obnoxious customers. They are the ones who are asking you to do things which you cannot yet do. Why are they useful? Because usually they can see their future <laughs> Excuse me, and how you can support them when you're more digitally transformed. And by supporting them, they want to spend their money. So it's not a bet, it's not a risk. So remember that. Also, remember that the disruptors who have no legacy are also looking in that space. So you have to move fast. I'm shutting up. I give you exactly one minute in your groups. Just talk to each other. I say, oh, yeah, I like that. I don't like it. Crazy guy, whatever. Then we move on to how we then accelerate transformation. Minutes over to you, please. Go. Talk, talk, talk.
you guys actually see at the front? Can you, you, you okay. it's okay, you're following everything. Yes? Okay. Great. Okay. So any ahas or thoughts or comments about the crazy presenter or anything? You see, they were sitting at the back thinking nobody would see them. This digital age, the world is flat. You cannot hide. Any thoughts? Everybody's shy. Okay. I'll just go back down. No thoughts, no comments? Really? No. Go and say something. Whatever. <laughs> yes! One for, hey, everyone, applause for this wonderful lady. Yay! Go for it. High five. Great. So. I think you are right, but it's impossible to change. She says I'm right, but it's impossible to change. Okay, we see that. So what I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes is I'm going to explain about transformation. I'm going to show you the trick to get everyone around you to agree to what you're doing, even if they don't understand it. And then I'm going to show you the process for transformation. 10 minutes. OK? So I hear skepticism. OK? So <laughs> let's go for it. So first part of the game. First part of the game is this, transformation. Important thing about transformation, which you must remember, we have here a caterpillar and a butterfly. Sorry, right, we're on. Yeah, a caterpillar and a butterfly. Everyone has seen these before. Okay, I have to say it three times. A butterfly is not a caterpillar with wings. I say it again. A butterfly is not a caterpillar with wings. I'll say it again, it's really important. A butterfly is not a caterpillar with wings. Why am I telling you this? Because caterpillars have certain competencies and KPIs and a culture. What do caterpillars do for a living? They walk with many legs, they eat a lot, etc. They have etc. leaves. That's what they do for a living. That's their job, that's their business model. What do butterflies do? They fly, they look nice, they're proboscis, you with me? Completely different. This is what we mean by transformation. Transformation means you must take what you're currently doing, get the resources, you remember I told you get the cash, build the resources, build scaffolding, a craft chrysalis, in order to transform, building the skills and the capabilities to be able to fly in this new world. Do you understand? It's huge change. It's not just little change, it's huge change. So, first thing we have to deal with is human beings. And we just reprogram them. Human beings are very easy to reprogram if you know how to do it. They're reprogrammed using a method which is based on their biology. Very simple method. Does anyone here remember four and a half million years ago? I was there. If you went around uh, USI four and a half million years ago, you didn't find people with sophisticated job descriptions like CTO and stuff like that. There were only two jobs available, which are hunters and gatherers. Now, if you're a human, hunt and gather, hunt, gather, etc. Okay. If you're a human being and your job is hunting and gathering, this is the problem you have. You wake up in the morning, you say, goodbye, darling. They say, where are you going? You say, I'm going hunting and gathering. Do they just let you go and say, bring some milk, or do they give you a big hug? Big hug, why? Because all the other animals are also using the same strategy of hunting and gathering, and they're better animals than you. You know, you say, Bolt runs at 26 miles an hour, the average rabbit, without doing press-ups, is 32 miles an hour. You see the problem? So, you say, Bolt can't catch a rabbit. So when you watch Discovery Channel, they'll tell you, mankind became the top of the planet because using their big brain, and they always do big brain, they could and blood vessels, they could think of ideas and communicate with their high level of intelligence. Have I got the right voice? And they could communicate complicated concepts. And then they'll say things like, and they were able to build tools, and these tools enabled them to do more things. You know? And then they'll tell you other stuff like, uh, uh, and they would work together collaboratively as a team, co-creating the, the, the tribe's needs, uh, and uh, they could do all of this because of their opposable thumb. Have you heard this stuff before? Yeah, it's complete nonsense, of course, because you're out hunting and gathering out of the bushes, bursts a saber tooth tiger coming towards you hungry with red eyes. I can tell you honestly, as he's running towards you, if you take your thumb and go stop, it's not going to save you. And at the same time as that's happening, if he's coming towards you and you think of what tools you had, they were called big stone, little stick, big, st big stone, little stick, big stick, big stone. Am I right? Is that the right way? I hope so. Who wants to kill a tiger with a stick? Forget that. Then they'll tell you it was the brain power. But as the tiger is coming down on you, I don't care how brilliant your ideas are, they're not going to help you. You're going to get eaten. So the only thing could have been teamwork. All of us hunting as one, chanting, hunt, gather, hunt, like one big team. Bad news. Other animals also hunt in teams. 
including saber-toothed tigers. They're going to eat you. You with me? What keeps us alive, actually, is a piece of software just here. That software is there just so that it's looking for change. The moment it sees any change, it knows you're a human being. You can't run as fast as a rabbit. So it says, change has happened close to me. <sighs> it's a big threat to my security. Then it does three things. It switches off your mod modern brain. It makes you really, really, really scared. Why does it make you really, really scared? Because when you're frightened, you're in the moment. Nobody goes, I'm going to get to my table. But I got a conference call at four. Nobody does that. You with me? You're here. Then it fills you with adrenaline. Why am I telling you this? Because all of you and all your colleagues have this in their brain. So if you want to accelerate transformation, you do not go down talking about change and transformation. Because when you do that, you will switch their brains off. They stay in the room. They don't run away. And you're talking, well, we must make sure we have a new model. Blah, blah. And then all they're hearing is, because you've just, they're worried. They're thinking, where do I go for the next job? You with me? So we don't do it like that. Have you noticed how many questions I've been using in the session? Lots of questions. Why? Because when you ask somebody a question, it hits a higher part of their brain. Bing! The thing is, that software there makes you fall in love with your idea. Why? Because the brain burns energy so fast that you have to have a policeman to make sure when you think of an idea, you turn it into more food. So when I say, what are you going to do next? You're going, what am I going to do next? And the idea comes into your head. If I say, go and do this next, you go, no, I'm not. We're, it's not for our industry. What do you know about us? You with me? Do you understand? So this is the mechanism which we use. So when you start to talk about transformation, you treat it completely differently. You bring every single conversation starting with something people know. Don't frighten them with shiny things in the future. Start from where they are. You know how we've been struggling to make sure that our business sales are X, Y, Z. Everyone knows that. No fear, brains on. Then you switch from that to saying something along the lines of, and actually you notice there are a couple of other organizations who are doing X, Y, Z. So you give them some facts. Why are you giving them facts? The reason you give them facts is because you're going to follow it with a question. Because the question, which I've got here, the question quite simply triggers the brain, and they will fall in love with whatever you're going to say, and they will talk and they will own it themselves. So from a human point of view, I use this method called IDQB. You need to drive all your strategies differently. In the old world, where it used to change slower than we could learn, it was not frightening to people because they knew what you were going to say because they said you said it at the last conference. In the new world, they don't know. So you bring them in. Did you see what I did? I said, tell me what your hopes and fears are. Do you know why I was doing all of that? Because I was about to frighten you with things like everything you know is obsolete. You, you with me? So that, you see, and you're not frightened anymore. So that's the other element. So we know how to deal with the people. Now we need to know how to deal with the process. The process is very simple. Take your organization, step one. Remember, we're building butterflies. So what can we do, which we need to keep doing, which keeps the lights on? Focus on that. Make sure you're not going to break that, step one. If you do that, people will be more relaxed. Your CFO will be less worried about stopping the innovation. Step two, where are our obnoxious customers and how can we build models to support them? Step two, sneak into that model a third part, which is what is it we could do which we cannot currently do? The way I like to think about it, when you start to do that sort of thinking, is very much like I said about centaurs, trying to create new people, different types of people. So the change people, the efficiency people, for them, their model is, I know, I'm going to do digital transformation. I will take person, oops, I will take person, and I will eliminate person. That's what they're thinking. You're thinking, actually, I, I've already got some people. And I have two choices. Number one, get some super smart people. I'll put a big head like that. And enhance them with technology. So you go out looking for technologies which could enhance your super smart people, whether it's data, whether it's connectivity, and send them off to make more money. Or you might say, actually, I have normal people with small peanut heads, OK? <laughs> OK, like that, OK? And again, you look for technology to support them, to help them, not to replace them. So that's step two. That builds the scaffolding because now people are on your side and they'll continue creating stuff as you're trying to do it. And then step three is you then move into the new environment. So at the people level, it's all about engaging them, not frightening them. At the process level, you're doing three things in parallel and organizations do struggle with that. 
I'm stopping at that point. Unless there are any more questions, I'll take the questions because otherwise you will be hungry. And then I'll finish with the final joke, if it's appropriate. Yeah? So did I do the hopes? I can't remember. Did I cover the hopes? What were the hopes? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> are you asking me questions or? Yeah, he's asking me questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>